All right. Joining me on the phone is Mark Sargent. He grew up out of South Whidbey Island, Washington, starting his career playing computer games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. But he is more famously or infamously known for his belief in the flat earth theory. He was in the documentary Behind the Curve. Mr. Sargent, thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you for having me. It is lovely to be here. No, no, that, no problem. I'm, I'm really honored, too. I actually, funny thing, I, rem- I mentioned on my show last week, you know, I, said, I said, you know what? I'd love to talk to someone from the Flat Earth community. So thank you so much for, uh, yeah. thank you so yeah. much for uh, coming on. Yeah, I'm happy. very thankful for that. Yeah, happy to do it. Thank you. I do want to ask you first. I think I'm willing to bet you get this question quite a lot. Sure. How did you come to the belief of the Flat Earth, and why do you believe in the theory? Uh, I got into it out of what I like to call conspiracy boredom, meaning I'm, I'm older and I remember when the internet was brand new and conspiracies slowly but surely started making their presence known on the internet and I had gone down just about every rabbit hole you could think of and ran out. I, and that, that part of the documentary is true where I, I just had nothing left. I was like, all right, well, is there anything I have in anything on my bucket list I want to look at? And I said, oh, why, why not Flat Earth? How bad could it be? And uh, I started digging into it in the summer of 2014 and immediately knew there were some problems, meaning uh, I, I couldn't just blow it out in a weekend and say, okay, well, I've looked at that piece of crap. Uh, you know, time to move on to something else. And so I spent the next nine months trying to uh, metaphorically prove the globe in a court of law and couldn't do it, <laughs> could not do it absolutely without, <laughs> without some loose threads hanging out. And so finally, I just gave up at the beginning of 2015. I said, you know what, the Internet as a, as a collective is very intelligent. They don't miss anything. I mean, the individuals, eh, not so much. But as a collective, they, they, I, I respect the internet hive mind. So I made it, started making a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, and I presented it kind of like a court case. And I said, okay, here's why I don't believe in the globe anymore, and this is why I'm leaning towards the flat side. Here's my points. Da, 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 da. You know, they were fair, fairly short videos, 10 minutes each, mm-hmm. maybe. And, um, th- and then put my contact info, because that's really smart to do on the internet. My, my real name, my phone number, my physical address. So it's still out there now. And I was hoping yeah, that... Yeah, I saw it on your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah and, and I was hoping the, um, the academic community would come back at me and shut me down and say, okay, here's where you're absolutely wrong. You can shut down your YouTube channel and go back to your life of popcorn and wine and movies out in, out in Colorado. And the funniest thing happened, that didn't happen. Uh, it the, didn't happen. No, the academics did not call me. In fact, the phone calls I was getting was from different subject matter experts, you know, in the, in the military, all branches of the armed forces, pilots, air traffic controllers, people that do with shipping, and they all started telling me the same thing. It's like, and completely unsolicited, and I, I didn't know who these people were. They said, you know what? It's not that crazy. Here's why. And then people started doing their own experiments, experiments that were not in my clues. They just started coming up with their own stuff, shooting long distance photography and firing lasers. In fact, I was asking, it's like, what's with the long distance photography? It's like, because it's tabletop flat. Because my initial model, I thought, oh, it's kind of like a, a roulette wheel. You know, it's kind of got some, some dips and stuff to it. And they say, yeah. no, they, they say, no, on, on, from the water standpoint, it's, it's perfectly flat. And I go, and they said, oh, yeah, by the way, you can't use um, a roulette table as, a, um, as an example anymore. I go, why not? And they go, because all the numbers on a roulette table add up to 666. <laughs> I go, oh, no. I go, oh, no. really? It's absolutely true. <laughs> it's like, that is so weird. Yeah, so that so anyway, the the clues were made in the beginning of 2015, and this thing just started snowballing, and the community started getting bigger and bigger, and the next thing you know, we had you know some celebs come out, and then the documentary came out and made some magazine covers, and here we are six years later, um, and you know if it wasn't for the the whole pandemic thing last year. I mean, 2019 was a fantastic year for us. Uh, better than ever, but it's it's been an amazing ride so far. Yeah, so you heard, you mentioned a little bit about the shape of the Earth, and I mentioned it. So 
if it's flat, what is it shaped? Like I've heard you mention something. Maybe like is it like a like a disc? Or a oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that should probably be the first question, which is okay. What are you talking about? Yeah. What, when you say flat, what do you mean? What I mean is that you are not living on this tiny little rock covered in a little bit of water and a little bit of smoke flying through the impossible vacuum of space. You are, in fact, there is no space. You are living in a building, basically, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, kind of no, no different than a Hollywood studio. And inside is this giant saltwater lake, and on that is a couple islands, and those are the continents. And it was so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960 because we didn't really didn't have i mean until the internal combustion engine happened we didn't have the tech to even discover it and when they figured it out when they found the the outer marker around 1960 they decided to just keep it a secret as best they could and and i must clarify we had nothing to do this is different from the truman show in that we had nothing to do with the building of it this was built by someone way older and way more um, powerful than ourselves. Uh, in fact, I want to—I love using the line from um, from Contact, you know, with Jodie Foster, where she got she makes it to the end and she she asks the aliens, you know, she says she goes, "Did you did you make this?" He goes, "We didn't make it. We don't know who did." <laughs> it's very very humbling. Oh, so, anyway, there you go. Interesting though, I was just, I was just about to ask one of my questions on my list of questions here. Uh, that you, I'm really, I mean, if I'm reading your YouTube channel correctly, it says that we're living. You say that we're living in a Truman Show enclosed world. Could you explain a little bit more on what you mean by that? Yeah, meaning everything that is around you is artificial. There was a movie that came out in, I believe it was '98. It could have been '99. Really depends on the release date and blah blah blah. Um, with Jim Carrey, and I know it's 20-something years old now, um, called The Truman Show. And the premise of The Truman Show was that uh, a Hollywood studio spent a few billion dollars and built this 20-mile-wide dome structure, and they raised a single person inside. Everybody else was in on the joke except for him, that everything in his world was completely artificial, but he didn't know it, and it was a 24-7 reality show. And... It got me thinking as I was watching, you know, as I was reviewing that show later, it's like, okay, because I thought, you know, one person, and I know they did it for the plot's sake, you know, you could have fooled a lot more than just one person with a 20 mile wide structure like that, because we, we believe the world that is presented to us. Um, there was a movie <laughs> that I touched on in the Clue series, but not necessarily in the documentary, um, M. Night Shyamalan's, one of his early, earlier films called The Village, which was fascinating. The Village, I'm yeah, where you took a bunch of some very rich people, took a bunch of kids, and they went out and started their own Amish community in the middle of a of a land sanctuary, a wildlife sanctuary, and they sealed it off and made sure that planes wouldn't fly over it. And they basically told the kids that this was the only community they knew. the 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 forest was super dangerous; you shouldn't go there. And it was like the eighteen hundreds. And they didn't tell, teach them history or anything like that. And it was a very simple life. But the point was, is that the kids believed it. Absolutely believed Why? Because why wouldn't they? We as children believe really what the authority tells us. And when we get older, we still kind of believe what the authority tells us. What's interesting to me, though, is what I thought about down the road, like after the movie ended, when all those, the, the older people that started the village, when they died, then what happens? Well, then everybody in that community believes it. There is nobody lying at that point. Everybody believes it as an absolute fact. And how I relay this to the, the flat earth is, is such. There was uh, George Orwell, the guy that made, wrote 1984. He penned an article in 1946 uh, for a British thing. And it was, it was about the responsibility of science, how uh, sci science doesn't understand that people, if you're wearing a lab coat, basically, and you put your stamp on it, people will absolutely believe it without even questioning it. And he was talking about, he was not a flat earther, but he mentions flat earth. He goes, he goes you, if you walked up to anybody on the street, and this is 1946, and you asked them how they knew the earth was a globe, they would just say, well, what are you talking about? We know it is known, right? We know it's a globe. And then if you push him on it, you say, well, how do you know? They start getting agitated because at that point, they all of a sudden realize it's like, wait, I don't know. I was just told this. And it leads to the question, well, 1946, you know, this is 12 years before NASA was even founded. How did everybody in the world know it was a globe? 
if there was no space programs? And, and it's like, well, because the scientists told them it was geometry and all. It's like, no, 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 no. Until you know for sure, you don't know for sure. Until you have some a rocket that can go up high enough, you don't you don't know jack. And this, that's a fascinating thing. And so this was this is something we have put out there for generation after generation, going back 500 years, going back to Copernicus. That uh, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a globe and it's a solar system and all this. Even long, 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 long before we had a space program. The question is, if they found out much, much later that it wasn't, would they tell anybody? No, no, you hmm. wouldn't. It was it's too it's too volatile. Um, and people say, well, what do they have to gain? It's like, no, nah, it's not what they have to gain. Because that, that might be one of your questions. It's like, why hide it? It's it's what they have to lose because if you don't find out until 1960, I'm sorry, civilization's already set in stone. Everything's already set up to go. I mean, the the potential disaster would be, oh, I don't know. Um, every university would have to revamp all their physical sciences, and I mean that's everything from geology, hydrology, archaeology. All those have to be retooled from the ground up. No play on words there. Um, economically, all the world markets would have to be uh, suspended for months. Until you figure out what it meant. And then, of course, the big angle is um, religious, which I know we didn't really talk about in the, in the documentary, which is you've got five major religious houses of this world. Um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Ju Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. And you're giving all those big five groups uh, leverage against science simultaneously? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's a short Illuminati meeting, let me tell you. <laughs> it's like, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, those things. It's like, yeah, let's not talk about this until we can figure out how to ease it into the public's mind without freaking them out. Um, so do I agree that they shouldn't have talked about it back in 1960? Yes, absolutely. Should not have told anybody. I mean, the, the Roswell thing alone showed how quickly people freaked out in 1947. Um, but yeah. Do I think they could probably release it now, which is why I think it was being allowed to disseminate into the public now? Sure. I mean, we've got high-speed internet, social media, six billion smartphones. Uh, you could push a pretty solid narrative around, and most people would go along with it. There Not you go. to mention, I, from what I understand, there is a soccer team or football team in Spain called a Flat Earth FC. I don't know if you've heard about oh, them. Of so. course I've heard about them. We've got, we've got an honorary member, um, one of our guys, uh, Iru Landucci. Uh, he was given a he was he was taken out there and given a jersey. Yeah, those guys are great. I I love the fact that that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and we've got I mean we've got some interesting people in different countries that are really into it. I mean most of the celebrities won't come out. The ones that have talked to us quietly said, "Yeah, don't bring up my name," but others have. I mean, um, like the number one tennis player in the world, uh, Novak Djokovic. He's 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 out there. Uh, Shaq was with us for 10 days until his sponsors got a hold of him. Kyrie Irving, uh, some footballers in the UK. Uh, I, love the, I love the athletes that get, on, get in on it. Uh, Mike Tyson, an interesting one. Uh, I, but anyway, it's, it's fun. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a, I, the, one of the reasons it resonates is because it's got a positive aspect to it. Meaning, if the world was built, you know, if we're living in a building... Well, then it was built by someone. And at that point, you've got two choices, either an older civilization, you know, an ancient civilization or some sort of deity. And at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs. You know, one man's ancient, de you know, civilization is another man's deity. But at the very least, it gives it's a, it's more of a purpose thing. It gives you hope. It's like you're, you're not an accident. You're, you're not some random thing that was created. It could be snuffed out at any second. This place was built for you, for a reason. What that reason is, eh, unknown. But it gives gets you one st step closer to answering that question than the Big Bang. <laughs> it, 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 very interesting response. I know you mentioned Kyrie Irving, and one of the things that I covered on my show yeah. was when Kyrie Irving uh, came out as a flat earther, and yeah. then he apologized. Uh, what happened with him? Okay, so, and and the media tried to latch on to this. Yes, he did apologize, but if you look at exactly what he was apologizing for, it, it, not as exactly what they what they advertised. So he came out in the beginning of I think it was 2017. It's been a couple of years now. Um, just we that time, yes. the what? It was around that time. He was with the Boston Celtics. Yeah, 2017. It was around, it was around that time. Well, no, no, not Boston. Not some. No, not not quite Boston Celtic yet. Um, he, he had just won the championship for Cleveland. LeBron was still his teammate. 
and I knew exactly why he came out. He had nothing to lose. It's like, I got my championship ring. LeBron's my best friend. You know, I'm 24. I got my own shoe line. I'm set. You can't touch me. So if I'm on my way to the All-Star game and I do a podcast on the plane, because <laughs> what could go wrong? On the plane. And, and he says on the podcast, like, oh, yeah, I'm totally into Flat Earth. Here's why. And then he lands, and the very next day is media day. What do you think they're going to do? I mean, athletes are notorious for giving really cookie cutter uh, interviews. It's like offense, defense, coaching, 110%, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden you've got a player. It's like, wait, that player's talking about the earth is flat. Yeah, drop whatever you're doing. Let's get over there. And they just came after him. Of, and he'd, he had forgotten that when you are in that athletic setting, and we'll get to the, his apology in a second, get to the athletic setting that the media has access to you whenever they want. Meaning after every game, long after the championship is faded, you get to go into the locker room and you can ask Kyrie whatever you want. What do you think they're going to ask? Night after night, they just were badgering about this. So he goes on, God, it was, I think it was, was it during the Celtics? No, I think it was actually when he transferred over to Brooklyn. So around that time, I think. So he he goes on um, Forbes magazine. He was he was announced as one of the thirty under thirty years old influencers, and he goes in this this session, you know, and they're talking to people. I think it was younger people, thirty under thirty, so it's a young audience, and he apologizes to the, for lack of a better word, the. Um, urban science teachers because what was happening was <laughs> these science teachers in, in various neighborhoods they were you know they're going through their thing it's like oh yeah by the way the earth is a globe and all of a sudden hands would come up in the back and they would be like yeah my man Kyrie, <laughs> he makes like 10 million a year he's got his own shoe company he's got all this stuff he says it's flat what do you got and basically, they're, they're calling saying, look, the Kyrie, because he's more media exposed, that he's more credible than the science teachers. And so the science teachers were pushing back and sending Kyrie emails saying, dude, you're killing us. <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're burying us. We're, we, what are we supposed to do here? You, and in fact, USA Today, I remember that during the All-Star game, that's what, exactly what USA Today did when they came at him. They said, you can't do this because if you do, you're going to be influencing. There's a lot of kids that are looking up to you. And so he was apologizing. He didn't back off of flat earth. He just said, he was just apologizing to the science teachers and saying like, sorry guys, I, I, you know, no, no harm meant. And I get it. You know, I, I felt bad for the science teachers too, but at the same time there, there are, you know, there is collateral damage. How's that? I, I, I understand. And I can understand what, what you're saying. I, I can understand that. I do want to. I do want to ask you a question that was uh, brought up to me because I went on my uh, social media accounts and I said, "I'm interviewing you. What questions would you like me to ask?" A sure. listener named William Varble asks, "Are the rest of the planets flat or just Earth?" It's uh, worse than you know. I think it's a Mission Impossible line. <laughs> it's, it's worse. It's worse than you know, <laughs> which is. Uh, the, the, the other planets aren't even, uh, they're, not, they're just lights in the sky, meaning <clears throat> if you go to a planetarium, and I know that kind of dates me, if you guys don't know what a planetarium is, please look it up. It used to be fun back in the old days. You lie on your back, let your eyes adjust, and then on weekends you go, they change the planetarium and do things like laser Floyd and crap. So in a planetarium, when you look up at the sky, do you see Jupiter? And, or the belt of Orion. Yes, you do. Uh, can you reach the belt of Orion right there? No, you can't. Why not? Well, it's because it's just lights on the ceiling. Who's to say when you don't walk out of that building, you're just in a much, much larger building. And that's what we're really talking about. And now whether the, the lights in the sky, you know, the planets and the stars are sentient is a whole nother, another thing. But that's really all they are. They're just, it's just a very giant very ornamental clock system that predates language that's all it is i mean the sun and the moon is like okay when are the seasons when's this i mean you know that's that's what they we used as clocks before there were clocks and and not you know not get up in the morning thing well that was just the sun but at night you could tell you know obviously you know what season it was and when the solstices were and all that stuff so yeah lights in the sky 
Okay, Lights and Sky, I, I, I understand that. I would want to ask you about the documentary, which I have seen. I actually watched it for my show about a couple months ago. Yeah. I liked it. It really really got my eye, because I will say this about the community. Yeah. You know, there are some there are some conspiracy theories that I have seen, yeah. and people never really go out and test it, and they don't, they don't really go out and try and figure out what they believe in. I can, I can respect the Flat Earth community in some way for coming out and actually testing their theories. Oh, I want to ask you, yeah. how did you feel about your portrayal in the documentary? Well, I'm kind of mixed because I was the, the protagonist in it. <laughs> and the, the documentary, even though I wasn't a producer, I was the one that basically fed him the narrative. What the initial documentary, I, I, let me go into it a little bit, was supposed to be a human interest piece. That's how it was advertised by the, the launch, the Los Angeles team that, that contacted me and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And then we got to the conference, you know, we, we shot pretty much off and on for seven months and we got to the conference in North Carolina and that 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone and everything changed for them. I did not know this until I listened to the director's commentary, which was on the iTunes version um, later the, the next year which was they really got bent out of shape when that happened. It's like, well, you know, it's all foreign games. So you're messing with the kid children and you're messing with their future. Now, people have asked me, it's like, would you change anything in the documentary? Initially, I said, well, yeah, I might change this and this. However, I was one of the few people that got to go see it in the theater. And I went around and, and saw it in different film festivals in different parts of the country in Canada. And the audience, the way they shot, because of, they bent it in a way, you know, because again, they, the director, every, everybody that was tied to that, to the documentary was against Flat Earth, but not in the beginning they weren't. So it was this weird hybrid by the time it was done. But because, I'll use a drug reference, because it wasn't pure, uncut Flat Earth, it didn't intimidate the audience. In fact, even the title, you know, behind the curve, whoa, we're going to make fun of flat earthers. So let's, let's go in and watch this thing. It got people off guard. I sat in audiences and they didn't know who I was. You know, I wore a cap and glasses and crap. And they, the first 20, 30 minutes, people didn't even think it was real. They thought it was a piece of docufiction. They, they honestly did not think it was real. And then all of a sudden that something snapped. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute there's something really big and weird on the internet. And I have no idea what it's about. Um, there was a, I'll, I'll give you a great example. There was a um, editor that it was shown to one of the, the they were friends of the, the group that, that filmed it. And they said, okay, watch this. He knew nothing about Flat Earth. They said, just watch it. We're not going to give you any context at all. Just watch it. At the end, he, he stops him. He goes, wow. He goes, what sort of budget did you have for this movie? And they're going, what are you talking about? Budget. He goes, all oh, those actors, they, mm -hmm. play, they they played it so straight. And they said, no. Mm -hmm. Are you still there? Oh, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Lord, I'm still here. Go on. So, oh, sorry. There was, a, there was a beep there for a second. Um, and they said, um, they, they said they, he played, the, the actors played it so straight. And, and they said, no, man, all those people were real. And he goes, what do you use? That conference that actually happened? Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely happened. To your point, though. The reason why Flat Earth expanded the way it did is because everybody hates it to begin with, including me. Everybody thought it was it was just this awful, awful thing. And so that's why people went out and started doing their own tests. In fact, they, people were coming up with their own tests that I had no idea what they were. And you know, right into the beaches and doing all this, this, this stuff. And that's how people, the, and they talked about it a little bit in the documentary, they were the ones that tore down the globe themselves which is why the retention rate is so high. If you were the one, I didn't convince you, I didn't persuade you. Uh, I just said, yeah, figure it out for yourself. And when people did, and they, you know, kind of like the matrix, if you wanted to go back to the globe, how could you? You were the one that tore, tore down the globe in the first place. Now you're gonna try to glue it back together. Very, very tough to do. So it's, it's this weird, yeah, it's this weird group of people that it's a love hate thing. Everybody hates it going in. And then at the end, it's like they, they everyone's got this breaking point. I it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going the other way. Kind of like I did. It's like, I, I'm going the other way on I, this and let's see, let's we'll see what happens with that. I will admit I came away with a different perspective of the documentary, mainly because, you know, there was a, I remember there was a point in the documentary and it was, I think it was, there was a flat earth meeting and there was a, a scientist meeting, and the scientist came up, and he actually was like, well, listen, we should talk to these people. We shouldn't shun them 
and just make fun of them. We should talk to them and yeah. understand, them, which I can understand because yeah. I believe, this is my belief, is yeah. that talking to people, talking to stuff like this, it's very important because understanding that, you know, you, know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, unfortunately, that, that part where he was at that bar with the, uh, with the other scientists, the other nerdlings, um, that bar was completely staged, just so you know. They the so, that was oh god yeah, god yes they were they, they they got him to do that you know that that was the the because they had to remember they had to create this narrative and they had to create a sort of a they were hoping that scientists would would kind of take that route and 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 talk to us more and try, introduce the dialogue they were trying to create this this bridge but the bridge doesn't exist. And by that, I mean, I cannot tell you, oh God, I, I've lost count of how many invitations we put out to scientists. In fact, it's the running joke is when a producer calls up and they say, oh yeah, we're going to get you to talk to blah, 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 you know, a, a scientist or an astrophysicist. I'm going, okay, yeah, let me know when that happens because they'll call them. And because it, it, it's something I said well, back in 2015, I said, look, if you have a master's degree or higher in a physical science, you're, you're you're pretty much there's nothing i can do for you you're not coming out of that you won't in fact you won't even address it uh, a perfect example i got a chance to talk to um two toronto astrophysics grad students the other week and they were supposed to be four <laughs> and two of them backed out immediately and the other two were just hanging in by by their fingernails because it is, in fact, it was it was something I had mentioned. I go, the, the problem is, is that once you get up to that level of academia, they look, even though they don't mean to, they look down on anything that's below that. It's like, we shouldn't have to lower ourselves to explain things. Because, because that's what I challenge. I'm like, look, if you, the reason why Flat Earth got, is doing what it's doing is because we created a very simple way to explain the universe that's easier than your model. And people are suckers for easy. You know, they, it's like, if it's easier, like why people text instead of uh, talk on the phone, which they used to do for a hundred years. People, people, will, it's, uh, it's the Chinese saying, people are like water. They will always take the path of least resistance. And when I put that to the, the Toronto students, they said, they said, well, why should we have to? You know, why should we have to make it easier? I go, there's your answer. <laughs> I go, it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't question, it's not a question of if you have to, you have to. If you don't, we're just going to keep doing this by attrition until you're the only people left in the room and everybody else is, you know, against you. And that's not trying to be mean or arrogant or anything. It's just how it's been panning out for the last six years. I will, I will say, because you mentioned the, the, uh, the Flat Earth Convention that I was in Raleigh. I will admit, I did find it very funny. I, I'm from that area. I'm from the area. Yeah. Where you, and you had the, the Natural Science Museum in Raleigh and you had the convention there. Yeah. That is yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we and and we didn't even know it was weird because we didn't advertise that much for it because it was the first one, and it was like we put some stuff on YouTube and some social media things. And I remember a lot of people don't know that media will send the the major outlets, like the major television networks, they'll send out scouts recon, and so the the recon guys showed up, usually a guy, one like one person. And they'll look around and I could see them on their phones calling in. It's like, it's like, yeah, you need to get someone here overnight now. <laughs> it's like, get, get a television team down here now. By the next, by the second day of the conference, the, uh, I mean, I was wired up. I think I had three hot mics on me. We couldn't even tell. We didn't even know who the cameras were. There were so many of them that they, they were covering this thing because it was so unique. It, I just think I just thought that was kind of funny in terms of like just a meme, you know. You have the flat Earth convention in the same area where there's the there's the big globe. I do think it's funny, but I do want to ask you. Yeah, it's been a couple years since the documentary. What do you think is next for the flat Earth community? <sighs> That's a tough call because, as you know, it's it's not even just the flat Earth community. It's it's everyone. Um, I mean, I, I can tell you what happened in 2019. You know, a couple of years afterwards. Where, I mean, yeah. we could do no wrong uh, in 2019. I mean, I, I did public speaking things in seven countries. Uh, I did a commercial, television commercial in Australia. Uh, we, we were doing we, multiple conferences, East Coast, West Coast, Canada, um, one in New Zealand, one in London. 
Um, I opened the Gather Festival in Stockholm. I mean, there was just so many cool things that were happening. And I remember the, um, the I'll give you a great example. At the beginning of 2020, I had just gotten back from doing a, um, a morning talk show in London. And on my way back, talk about your foreshadowing. On my way back, the a lady walks up to me with a clipboard as I'm getting on the plane. And she goes, so have you been to China in the last two weeks? <laughs> And that was it. What? Well, well, no, that's that's what they were asking people when be, before the virus thing was announced. They were asking people, anyone that was getting on an international flight, if they'd been to China in the last two weeks. And and I remember hearing just this glimmer of it. So when I got back, I started watching the news like, ah, crap. I, I mean, I was scheduled to do a um, uh, a McDonald's. Here is a great example. A McDonald's commercial back in London um, because they celebrate something called Pancake Day. A couple days a year or something like that. And they thought, oh, flat earth pancakes, flat round. It's like, oh, we could do a total endorsement. I go, I'm in. And then lockdown. And that was it. 2020 is just a blur. Uh, we had one. We did, yeah, do a, we, we did do a conference last year uh, in South Carolina. The thing, you got to remember, it's a conspiracy crowd. So we had, we had to, our tough part was we had to find a, um, a venue that wouldn't do masks. And we ended up doing one in uh, Greenville at, of all things, the um, the Shriners Convention Center. Who knew? They were like, yeah, we don't wear them. We don't require them and, and all that. So we did a, uh, a conference down there. We were supposed to do one in Vegas. I mean, all the others were supposed to happen. And um, we've got another one happening next month. Same thing in, com in uh, South Carolina. I'm not going to that one, but... It's, yeah, it's weird. I don't know what, what's going to happen. We still have producers sw swimming around as far as TV shows, but every, all the producers are really nervous because they don't know what's going to happen with the rules. And I can understand that. Being, being a comedian and me, I can understand that. I do want to ask you, is there anything that I haven't asked you about but you feel is important? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, when it comes to this this topic, there's a couple things. Um. The, the intro of the book I wrote uh, before the conference in Dallas, I said, look, and I'm, I'm not, this isn't reverse psychology. <laughs> if, if you like your life the way it is and you steal a line from Men in Black, you think you got a good beat on things, don't look at this. If you wake up and it, every day and everything is awesome and you don't want to change anything, great. Uh, don't, don't look at this because when you go down this, it's very much a red pill, blue pill thing where you can't come back from it. You can't unsee it when when you see it uh kind of like you know those drawings that have two different two different meanings to them and uh but it also don't um you know don't take my word for it you know everything i've said right now you know i'm not here to convince you or persuade you I'm just here to give you a few ideas do your own research ask questions and figure it out for yourself and don't write me letters later saying that i ru ruined your life because i certainly didn't do it deliberately <laughs> well, well, Mark, I really appreciate and I'm really thankful you thought you uh, took time out of your busy day yeah. to come and talk to me. Where can people find you? Uh, easiest way to find me is just type just Google, Google Flat Earth Mark or put in Flat Earth Mark into YouTube. Um, you could type in Flat Earth Mark Sargent in Amazon. I got a couple books on there. Of course, the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve is fun. Um, got a podcast out there on TFR. You'll find me, but but don't again. Don't just look at my stuff. The, there's the community's massive at this point, and there is a lot, a lot of content out there. Figure out what resonates for you, and uh, kind of dive down the rabbit hole and see what happens. Well, that was Mark Sargent of the Flat Earth Community here on the craziest show in the mountain, Manny's Rockin' Conspiracies. <laughs> this has been. The first hour of the show, you're listening to WWCUFM, the broadcast service of Western Carolina University.